Well, full disclosure, this has not made my card yet, but I'm certainly liking it a lot more. So it wouldn't surprise me. I make this line 12. You know, if you look at the gold sheet college football previews, the top 25, you see the schedule. We had a 12 there. It was 10 and a half. And now uh, it's come down where I see some tens. So that has piqued my interest even more. Now, Penn State dynamic defense. Best defense in college football. Listen to this. Last year, they were number one in sack differential, plus 33 sacks. That's an amazing number to have 40 sacks on defense and only allow that few on offense. And James Franklin, uh, let's see. If we think about this game one year ago, what did Franklin do with five seconds left? Left in his starter, scored a touchdown, had a front door cover to beat West Virginia at home. So we know James Franklin is the biggest fan head coach and alumni head coach where he wants to cover the spread. I went back to the database. James Franklin, remember, he started at Vanderbilt in 2011. If you bet every game James Franklin has coached, you have gone 95 and 66, 59%. If you have bet every game that James Franklin was a favorite of minus seven or more, you have gone 54 and 27 against the spread, 66.7%. Listen, Allard had some decent numbers last year, quarterback, but he did not play well against the top opponents. The Ohio State game, the Michigan game, in the bowl. He struggled to throw the ball down field. I think he's truly impro improved in that. When I look at the opposition, you know, I see a team in West Virginia, Neil Brown, game one, he's 0-6 straight up, 1-4-1 ATS as a small favorite or dog. West Virginia returns 13 returning starters, eight on offense, only five on defense. And that was a defense that allowed 150 yards and almost 5.0 yards per carry against conference foes. This Penn State offense will be a run-heavy offense. Now, the reason I did not get to the window with this yet is Penn State lost three offensive linemen starters. Now, that's important. But when all three offensive linemen were drafted in the NFL, that makes those three losses that much stronger. Now, they do have people that are backing them up that started five and six games respectively last year. So they have a few part-time starters. But when I look at their defense against a – West Virginia offense that wants to try to run the ball. They were number six in the percentage of runs per pass last year in the FBS, excluding the three service academies. So they want to run. They're going to try to run. But Penn State's front seven is still so good on defense, I don't think they can. Allard with the addition of Fleming at wide receiver. The O-line has done well. And the final stat I'll give you, in the last three years, when James Franklin has been a favorite up to minus 24 points, so we're excluding games as a huge favorite of 25 or more, he is 18-2-1 against the spread. That is 90%. That's a certainly a strong point spread record in this role. And, Ralph, I want to ask you about week one in particular, because I find I like to lay points in week one. A lot more than I'll lay points at other times of the year. It feels like all summer, all the sharp guys are like, well, this dog is live. Well, that dog is live. And they find, uh, you know, there's there's more attention paid to underdogs in week one than there is to favorites. Have you noticed anything in that regard? Is that just me, just uh, cherry picking stats in my head? And are you someone that also in week one looks to lay points more than you would take them? You know, Teddy, um, I, I probably I probably have a few more overs, you know, uh, favorites in week one. I'm trying to pull that up real quick. Sorry, I uh, had a typo. Uh, if we look at college football favorites in game number one since 2015, they've actually only covered 46.6% of the time. So in general... Obviously, dogs have covered more. Just to just to quantify what what your statement is. Now, I've made I've been on the show several times talking about how big favorites week one have covered and significant week one favorites. And I think we're going to learn a lot about our next chart, which sort of correlates with that question. So, 
I really don't fall into a pattern. In the NFL, it's different. I do like the dogs and I do like the road teams in week one because the parity is so much different. But with, you know, with a top to bottom of maybe 55 points difference in the power ratings, you know, that changes because of the, the huge massive lines you can have, especially playing an FCS team.